Hi everybody, welcome to my channel for a new video. So this time something a bit different. I wanted to make a list review of the Ogre Khan and Infernal Dwarfs list from the Bellum Lacum. So first of all, what is Bellum Lacum? It's a tournament that my club organizes. It's the upcoming uh, weekend. It's a two-day tu team tournament, team of four people. And basically it's located very close to Geneva in France. Um, so close to Switzerland, but it's actually in Duven in France. Uh, meaning that we have the particularity to have Swiss teams, uh, Belgium teams, French teams and Italian teams. So a good mix um, of uh, some of the, the best players of these countries, which is going to be interesting. And the, the second aspect that is very interesting about this event is the fact that it's always taking place during January meaning shortly after the point update. So what I wanted to do in this video is basically review quickly the Ogre Khan and Infernal Dwarf list to see a little bit how this concept, um, list concept that we saw last year did evolve in the new year with the, the balance update to see if it had any impact on these two armies. And obviously why did I take these two armies? It's just because I have most expertise on these two and I wouldn't feel too yeah, to how can I say to comfortable analyzing some other other army and also I don't have the time to so I decided to, to pick the two that I, I know the most. So regarding Ogre Khan first, this is my list. I will talk about it. What did I pick those choices during my tournament introduction video? But as you can see, I went into a more fighty version of the list that I played a lot last year which was a double block of mercenary veteran and I had also some bruises with um, three character doing ETC and after ETC at Interregio the French team tournament I play only Shaman and Khan but with the Chrono Photocracy so I, I tried something slightly different and here it's again another version which is a bit more fighty but I I'm talking more about it in my uh, tournament introduction video so you have to, to wait for that I won't uh, explain all the details Regarding other lists, so here we have uh, Benji, who is the TRC uh, captain, or TRC, the, the French team. Um, he played also last ETC with Russia. Um, basically, he didn't change his list at all, I guess. He kept the Great Khan like he had. Um, Shaman Shamanism with Yetifrus, Blood Letter, Ligatong as well. Can be as B, block of bruiser, block of mercenaries, a little bit of um, additional scoring, two additional scoring unit, double kin eater, two saber to tiger. I think it's also yeah playing rotten Joe to have the um, to add a little bit of strength in his ambush area, and then one cannon to frost. So basically, I think it's exactly the same list that he played uh, last year at etc. I don't know if he had to remove something, but I know that the point didn't move much for for this type of list so i think he, he kept it more or less the same as as before and surely it has worked quite good for for him last year so he didn't feel the need to to move to change anything um then we have velux playing with a shaman of master tom then we have three hunters so this is going to be wild earth yeah we have bsb here and then another two hunter so nice to see some wild earth here didn't expect to see many wild earth lists because i th still think meta wise they don't fit quite well but definitely there is always it, it's not that they don't fit it's just that it's very hard to play wild artist effectively because you need to master the art of msu and aggression you need to play very aggressive and uh, in order to do that properly you need to be very skilled <laughs> it's not easy at all it's very enjoyable to play those lists i've been playing them in the past but I felt quite hard to master them to a point where you can win most of the secondary objective and the games against a skilled opponent. So here what he tried to do, basically he has yeah, three core boys, uh, some small coring in core. I tried to put some uh, Tasker, but Tasker, yeah, three of them only and without the Frosty might be hard to, to be effective. I think I would have picked maybe some Yetis instead. For, for his list to have a, to add some mobility but maybe he wanted to be a bit better scoring wise then he picked uh, four four monster we saw this combination before basically where you have a one rock rock and three giant so basically you have six single model that move really well one very good counter charger that has some impact but i think he might struggle with this list against stuff like dread elves 
warrior as well might be difficult because he's not so he hasn't so many strengths in the list basically you have the rock rock strength 7 but then all these guys are strength 5 um what about them you have one spine splitter guy so strength 6 on the charge but he's strength 5 and he's strength 6 but only ap2 and he has no yeah, no ward save, so he cannot really fight monsters. So basically, it might be a bit uh, short strength-wise to to be able to deal with the the, the list that have a lot of uh, single model monsters. So it might be, yeah, not sure this list will be very effective, to be honest. Um, Borsha played last ETC with Germany. He decided to go with Wild Dot as well, which surprised me a little bit because we were discussing a little bit the list and I didn't expect him to, to bring Wild Dot, but I'm very curious to see what he brings to the table. So he decided to go with Shamanism and not Tomaturgy, which is sometimes the obvious choice for Wild Dot list because it just works really well to add some damage and also to have some... Um, yeah, it works well as well with Mammoth Hunter and the single models with the Breast Weapon, for example. So we have the BSB, okay, Cult Leader BSB, I think it's really needed in Wild Earth because it allows you to play im with even more freedom, so it's really good on the list. Um, then he went for a Tusker character, always loved them, always found hard to, to put them in my list, but I just love this uh, Tusker Hunter, but it's hard to, to give up actually the, the main strength of Mammoth Hunter, which is special deployment. Then we have a Spine Splitter with... Dragon Fire Gem. So he has no ward save, but he strikes quite hard. With Earth Reaper, Alchemist Alloy, I think he has only a 3 up, which is not a lot. I think here yeah, maybe I would have preferred the plus 1 Carcadence Resilience, maybe, would have been a good option as well. Or maybe also the the one that we don't see a lot, but that is actually a good equipment, is the Mammothite Cloak. Could have been also here an option for, for this character. Then he went with a unit of tribesmen as a mage bunker, I guess, with Aether Icon. A block of scrapling, okay. Um, can be... Yeah, that's maybe the main reason why he decided to put this guy, the general, on a tusker. Because you will need leadership around. So the fact that he's on a tusker means that he won't move a lot uh, away from the, from the center battle line. So he can maybe continue to bring them leadership. Here I think small detail, but... Since it's a general, you have a 150 item allowance. I think I would have tried to fit in Pet Weapon and Touch of Greatness. I think this is really... I played that before. This is really awesome on this character. Because then you have... You hit well, you have a lot of attacks with high strengths. Great Weapon is decent as well. But then that's typically the, the type of build that I would pick rather on the BSB. That has only 100 points item allowance. He, in this case, he didn't try to bring anything in addition to these 100 points maybe mr2 could also have been an option because that's cheater the problem is alchemy so obviously you can hide them behind the tusker cavalry hide him behind the tusker cavalry but that could also have been an option um eight tiger which is always a good core choice for wild at least because you can put for example i think yeah this is the place to go for this guy that has no ward save so i think this makes perfectly sense um as a as a place to be for him because then he can just go out when he has a good charge to make and with Hurt Reaper Spine Splitter he's deadly enough to cause some trouble. Also here a possible option that I saw some of the times would have been to put, um, yeah I didn't pick this armor, is the uh, Restless Belt in combination with Spine Splitter is really nice because you go up to strength 7 on the charge. So you can go, for example, Iron Fist, uh, Restless Bell, Spine Splitter, then you have a better defense because you have 2 up uh, rather than 3 up, and you strike also really well on, on the charge, which I like. Um, then he picked, um, that's the unit we talked, he, he convinced me to put that in my list. Um, didn't play that a lot, this unit, but yeah, the output is really nice, and um, I'm pretty convinced to... Uh, what he told me about this unit is the fact that with the gain get it changes a lot for the great weapon guys and yeah, the number of dice that you roll basically you can roll a lot of them um, I think it adds a lot in the list because it makes it a lot better scoring wise uh, without that unit it might be hard to win some secondary objective but this brings some very uh, yeah good solidity to a world at least that sometimes is a bit weak on secondary objective so this is nice Yet he was a champion, that might be a good yeah, place to go for the BSB. As you can see, he picked the Vanguard. So he's uh, having Lookout Sir, and as you can see, Yeti are quite cheap. So 
I think they are a very good choice in wild dot list. So this is a smart choice for me to have put the BSB within this unit. Also, they can benefit from Rampager Chain, which is nice. So good choice here. It's a quite cheap unit that can move really well and be very annoying for the opponent because the output is not bad at all. A one Kin Eater, a Frosty, and a Slave Giant. Uh, we can we could question the utility of the Frost Mammoth in this list. Uh, to be honest, I don't know if it's the best choice. Maybe I would have, I think myself, I would have maybe traded these two guys for two giants. I think that would have been really nice to have triple giant to be even more annoying. I don't think here the Frosty synergize a lot. I mean, yeah, you can make the Tusker Cavalry mount strike before stuff. With the Yetis, they, they do well, but I mean the Yetis will move fast because of the Vanguard and might move on the side, so can really the Frost Mammoth keep the pace, keep track of them and buff them enough? I don't know, and they, I, I, for having played Yeti in the past, you often want to use uh, train to your advantage because they cannot stay in the open field and play the role like mercenaries, just stay in the open field and uh, be shot at and zone stuff. They need to, to move to places where they can be a bit hidden or use cover. So I don't think, I know he loves the frost, but I don't think I would have picked it. What is nice from the frost is double hunting spear that can give him some tools against uh, big targets that could be annoying for his list because he has no access to cannon. Um, he has not a lot of strength in the list to fight also single models. So I think maybe I would have, yeah, I think I would have traded these two for two, I don't know, maybe Giant Club, Giant would have been nice, but that's a question of taste again. Um, looking forward to see how he does with this list. Uh, Scop is playing, we have two Mammoth Hunter, so quite a lot of Hunters, but he's playing a classic list, so Shaman is the general of Tom. Then you have a BSB uh, with some MR and a bit defensive stuff. We have a trolley, the guy with Earth Reaper, but you can see the price. I mean, pfft. yeah, it's 5 attack strength 5 for this price. It's completely crazy, so I wouldn't pay that. Personally, then we have a Spine Splitter guy that is more reason reasonable price wise. Like the build, I think it's quite good. However, I prefer, personally, I prefer, since he has already trolled it, yeah, maybe he wanted to not have a double weakness to um, alchemy. That's why I decided to go with Basalt. But I love also paired weapon with uh, Essence of Mutual. I think it is really good as well. But yeah, maybe you wanted to have some ward save against fire. Eight bruises, tribesman dart, double kin eater, double rock rock giant, and saber to tiger. So yeah, quite an offensive list that will try to be aggressive at the table. He has a small Death Star that is likely to be in the middle, the main issue might be um, dealing with Frenzy with Leadership 8. That might be a problem for him. Um, but he has some good tools, definitely a list that will try to be aggressive and it's either it works and you win big or you might lose really big as well. I think it's a lot also, yeah, depending how the Hunter can perform and find good spots and definitely how he can handle the Frenzy and get some good charges with Rock Rock. Arkalak, uh, one of my Swiss mates, and plays also since a lot of years the Ogre Khan. So he went with mixed approach with a heavy character section. We have a great Khan or oh, Kingslayer as well. So for the moment, I'm the only one that brought the old Kagadai's uh, legacy. So he went here yeah, with the classic Great Khan, but he paid for Spine Splitter, which is not my favorite choice on the Great Khan, but why not? Um, then trolley the guy. Yeah, definitely I would have preferred to have a spine split on him and pick another defensive gear like five up a ward save. I think that this would have been slightly better because you like your mammoth hunter to do slightly more on the charge than only five attack strength five. Um, he went with shamanism as well. He had to protect protect the merc vets, which makes sense. Um, Viper curse BSB double ether icon triple MR three total nine tribesmen iron fist. 
Three tribes and three bruiser. I think for me it's a big debate around Iron Fist. In my list, I decided not to play to 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 pay it because yeah, it's 90 points, so it's really huge um, this unit. Um, in my opinion, it's not really worth it at, at the moment. It's priced too heavily. So two dice, two darts, some scraplings to give also reroll to the scratapult. Uh, no cannon, a frosty trappers saber to tiger. Yeah. Um, so Frosty makes sense obviously with the list, just thinking he might be a bit short combat wise because he hasn't a lot to, it's only 5 Merkvets, not 6, um, no Bruiser in core, the Great Can is not Kaganai, no cannon. He might be very much relying on the Merc shot to deliver a lot against monsters, MSU monsters and uh, fighty character. He might have some problems here, so I think he will maybe pick more carefully the type of matchup that he wants. But I think here, yeah, he might he might want to avoid maybe some of the the, the big monsters that that we see because uh, strength wise against a typical monster other than the Merkvets, he might struggle a little bit to to kill uh, res six monsters, for example, that that you might see. I'm thinking here about, for example, typical War of the Dark God list might put him a little bit in, in trouble since he has no cannon, only five Merkvets and no Bruiser in Koho. So, yeah, but also looking forward to, to see what he does with the list because I know he played them since a long time. Then you have my mate Anchor played together ETC last summer. Uh, nice to see him bring Yogkan. I expected him maybe to bring his old concept. I know he loves the Bombardier, but I see no Bombardiers in his list. And he went actually with a similar list to um, his um, captain from tier C, Benji. Basically, you can see we have Master Shamanism with uh, Ligatong, we have Great Khan. He went for the Kagadai, good choice, my friend. I think Kagadai has something to, to do uh, now. It's it's a debate, it's a bit more expensive than the other version, but um, I think it has some, some interest, especially for me, if you pick Tribesman instead of Bruiser. With Bruiser, there is a debate because then it's very similar to what you bring. I also like the Great Can to cover some of the weaknesses of the unit where it goes. Uh, he paid for Lightning Vembrace, <laughs> didn't see that a lot. Um, we have the cult leader BSB with Yeti Furs. For me, Yeti Furs is not really needed. Maybe it allows slightly more passive play because you get an additional agility points on the Merc units, but um, I didn't feel really the need to, to pick it. Um, Bruiser Discipline, Bruiser Bruiser. I prefer personally, I think with Great Can, you have to rely on Leadership 9, Rerollable. And I really prefer, um, very much prefer the Swift Stripe banner. I think this changed completely the impact on this unit that can zone much more. Then he picks two dart Merkvet, so he has this, the four scoring, one key eater, um, no frost mammoth, and then he goes for double squat apple. Okay, some changes to Benji's list. So the basically until here, it's pretty much the same, and then he decided to move uh, move away one key eater, which is something that I can understand since you have Shamanism with the Totemic Summon, that's also something I did. Uh, not a big issue. He kept the Double Tiger, okay, he kept the Cannon, but he went with Double Scratapult instead of the Frost Mammoth and Second Kin Eater, more or less. And also I paid Double Discipline, okay, he wants to take no risk to the 9 Rollable to the, due to Panic, why not? Um, it's a safe choice, at least. And discipline is very cheap at the moment, so my, why not? Why not, indeed? And he went for accurate, which is an interesting choice. I prefer for uh, arm save, but accurate is definitely useful. Um, maybe since the type of the list, if you watch the rest, he has some more shooting, so maybe it's slightly more passive list um, to other archetype of this list that you might see, to other types of, th of this list archetype, sorry, that you might see, um, of the, yeah, Mercenary, Bruiser, Great Can, it's the type of list that, that we see sometimes, but he decided to bring a bit more shooting, so, and yet he throws a couple of, um, yeah, there are a couple of things that made me say that maybe it's slightly more passive play than some other type of the list. But yeah, I wish him good luck because he's a good mate. Um, Cap, uh, he's playing Shaman Tom. Ah, Rod of Battle. 
good choice, my friend. I think this is really strong for Diogo Khan, but I don't understand why more of us don't pick this item. Then you have 18 inch BSB with Viper. No MR, no MR, and no, no shooty Merc as well. And then we have a Mammoth Hunter on a 2 up Troll Eater. Again, phew, this is so expensive for 5 attacks, strength 6, AP2. This is really expensive. Um, then we have Destiny's Cold. This is the opposite, a cheap hunter with just a 4 up, 4 up, 5 attacks, strength 5. Can be annoying for a bit more than 300. I think this is um, quite cheap and not a bad choice at all. We have 10 Bruiser with the Swift Stride, 2 Darts, 2 Tiger, 2 times 2 Yetis, 2 Rock Rock, and 3 Merc Vets. So again, here, do we have... We have no Discipline Banner, so this is definitely something I would have liked to see here, because I think it's very, very risky to play without Discipline Banner on Leadership 8. Uh, double Hunter, interesting, Double Rock Rock add a lot, um, but it might have some issue. I think it cannot really face things to s that strike fast and hard and also that shoot well maybe. I think against elves he might struggle for example. So he has only 4 scoring units and 3 of them are really really short, uh, so, uh, meaning they are easy to kill more or less. But he has enough peace that he can sacrifice, you can see there's all of that that he can possibly, that is cheap and small that he can possibly sacrifice so he might be able to use them to allow good plays on bruiser and rock rock to get the charges so he has definitely a lot of tools to allow them to charge also i've liked in the past when i played a um, long time ago double rock rock i've liked to play the yetis to babysit them because basically you can put yetis in front of rock rock they can charge quite fast and it just babysit them for the frenzy and you can then charge the yetis out and rock rock so this is i think a, a smart choice that we don't see a lot anymore then you have alberto also good or can play here from italy don't know anymore if alberto you're still living in france or not but you're definitely still an italian <laughs> so we have master pyro with a legal tongue and firebrand okay this is a bold choice i went for pyromancy Definitely, maybe wanted to pick uh, and hurt some of the the matchup where Pyro does a lot. Then you have MR two, Viper Curse, MR MR four, Cult Leader, a choice that we see a lot when you see the shooty Mercurts with the Frosty, eight Bruiser, which is not a lot, a couple of additional scoring. So I think this is a good good number of scoring, five scoring unit. I felt myself that playing only four when you have the darts that you might sometimes like to throw in the middle of the board to just deal with chaff or be a chaff. It's a bit short to have five, it's slightly more and it's it's nice, but the downside is the fact that eight bruiser can be shot down pretty easily. I saw myself with playing 10 that uh, sometimes 10 were also dying quickly, so eight can even more die quickly, but it might not take so much risk with this unit because he has no fighty character. So I think he will like to be with two characters within the Merc Vets and maybe, yeah, maybe he can throw them alone actually without without character. They can hurt some damage, do some damage and they are not costing so much because there is only eight. So I think old character will be, yeah, Discipline Banner. So he will definitely put Shaman Can and this is going to be a mostly a shooty unit that will try to do as much as possible from, from range. Uh, he has a lot of close combat. If you consider the fact that yeah, this will be like a shooty Death Star and the rest is basically shooting, 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 more shooting and support monster, a couple of kin eaters to be annoying. So I think this is also um, quite passive list that will try to do a lot from distance and if it achieves to kill a lot of things from distance, then it can go really forward and engage. I think this is especially a strong list against VS between Master Pyro and Double Scratapult. Might do a lot against VS. Uh, scary as well for monsters because he has access to Bruiser, Shooty Mercurets and a Cannon plus Double Hunting Spear here. So this is also not an easy game for monsters, not an easy list to face, but I think he might need to corner against some MSU monsters list to not be in trouble uh, combat wise and to delay also the combat but mostly yeah i'm looking at this list to hurt dread elves msu sylvan elves ibon elves obviously vermin swarm 
um, obviously bistrots, all the stuff that are not well armored. I think this is a list that is going to, when it's paired against the right matchup, it can do a lot, definitely. Also MSU Dwarf, for example, stuff like that. Okay, that's it for the Ogre Khan. So now we're trying to have a look at the Infernal Dwarfs list. Shawal, he was also third at ETC with Russia. Um, I don't know if he played the exam exact same list or not, but he went with the same concept that he played at Interregio last year, which is a double bastion. And then I think he changed some of the stuff. So it's a very straightforward list. He has 2 times 20 blood of us with Bastion, 2 giant to play on the flank and have some uh, good lateral mobility, 2 unit of immortals, 1 chaffing vassal levies uh, that can also be useful for scoring purposes. And then he went with Adept Occultism, Essence, Adept, good choice. With Lega, it's nice because he has two characters that have a four power save that can play with the bodyguard rule. So he has basically poss possibly three or four units that can hold to any charges. Basically, if you put double Lega in Immortals, they will hold to any charges. And also the fact that he has Overlord can be also in one of these units. So with these three characters, basically, he can hold to any charges, but surprisingly enough, he has no BSB. <laughs> That's very, very surprising for me. Um, he might be very susceptible to panic check. Why is there no BSB? He's just relying on leadership 10. That's it. Also, personally, it's not to my taste to my taste to have an overlord without the Onyx core. I think this is not very strong. Um, CC wise, I definitely prefer to have Onyx Core than Eros Art. But then, yeah, we have Adept Occultism, Adept Alchemy, Lamasus Cola, so very strong magic face, but no BSB. I think here I would have removed some of the stuff, maybe exchange him for like an Adept to Witchcraft, remove the essence, and field a cheap BSB, because I think this might be a bit playing on the edge, <laughs> like we might say, because, yeah, there is a lot of stuff that can panic. Nothing is immune. Uh, a lot of the stuff rely on being bodyguards, steadfast, so you will definitely make some break check. I don't know. This is a bold choice. This is definitely a bold choice. I would have definitely put a BSB in this list. Yep, curious to see if he can, if he can survive to that. Um, but other than that, it's very solid list. I think if you add the BSB to that, it's uh, it's very hard to, to to break through this list. Then we have Xavier Flintbe McVanagan playing Adept Occultism. Fighty BSB, okay. A double Conjurer that are quite cheap. Then we have three units of Vassals, Shooty Vassals, Double Slaves. So he picked all the cheap stuff from Core but not striking hard, but here's the striking force. 63 Lagas, okay. Uh, 19 Immortals, but he has nobody to really... He's going to rely on the BSB to be fighty enough to give them bodyguard. Not sure that's enough, to be honest. And also maybe, yeah, he wanted to, give some, to have some reroll because of Ashurok. Okay, I can see that. Occultism. Yeah, maybe I would have picked Lugar with Alchemy, for example, to ensure that you have the reroll for the Lugas. But with Lugar, you have a ward save, so you can go in the Immortal and not be too scared of being killed in combat. And then Tree Anointed. I think the main weakness of this list, it's very blocky. You have nothing that moves well um, on the flanks, and we know that's an issue for Infernal Dwarfs, but if you don't pick stuff like giant um, fighty character, maybe... Kalim Titan, stuff like that, you might be in trouble to to move well on the flanks. And also, strength-wise, he might be in trouble because he has only them striking at strength 6. But he relies a lot on them being able to deliver because the rest is strength 4. Okay, AP 2 and maybe we roll to wound, but still strength 4. Uh, all of that is strength 3. This is strength 5. So he might be in trouble definitely against MSU, monster list, I think he's in big, big trouble here. So definitely will pick his matchup to face maybe some more stuff like else, maybe VS as well. 
I think it might go in this direction. But I would have maybe, yeah, maybe because of the pyro. Okay. Yeah, we might see. I saw myself that with a wizard adept of occultism and wizard adept of pyro between these two together, you can hurt a lot against a low resilient army. So this might be his way to to bring a cheap master pyro. Okay. Um, next one. Ushapti playing. We have a prophet on a bull, apprentice occultist. Yeah, this is a cheap combination for you have access to the toxic breath and you have a decent cowboy. So, solid choice. We have an adept pyro that is going to be general, okay, with some MR. You have a shooty and yeah, also little fighty BSB. He has like a two up, which is not much. Apprentice with a book. Wow, 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 wow. It's expensive to pay a plus two to cast on Ravenswing. It's very, very, what can I say? Yeah, it's very situational, basically. I think the book on an adept makes sense. For example, I love it on the Lamassu. But here on an apprentice, I would have liked to keep him chief, I guess. And furthermore, he has no binding scroll. So I would definitely have changed that for a binding scroll. 25 flintlock, wow, look at that, 700 points, this is crazy. So he tries like the, I think this is the banner where you can reform, so he tries like the Citadel Guard Star, where you put your fighty character, kind of fighty character in it. You try to shoot, 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 when they charge you, you should stand and shoot without any penalties, and then you can reform and fight a little bit. Not sure this is worth more than a thousand points, but we will see. Double levies, 25 spell weapon Lugar, yeah, we might, we see um, more of them because they are quite cheap. Icon of Ashurk on them. Um, that doesn't remove framing attack from them, so I don't see the point. I would have definitely, I would have expected it on the BSB to remove the flaming from the Lugar. I don't see really the point, it's just to gain some grinding. Strange choice here. Uh, two Kadim Chariot with pet weapon. Double Nafta Troll, okay, yeah. This is, I think, a good way to say to strong infantry and big unit, I, you don't want to face me for just 300 points, this is decent choice. And then the Fighty Titan that has become more and more, more expensive, but is still an amazing fighter. And he plays a slingshot. Oh, I didn't expect that slingshot. Uh, for me, a bit overpriced at the moment because we have so many ways to get access to uh, incendiary token that we might not need them. And two chariot also that can zone a little bit. Does he lack something, maybe a bit of strength? Because other than the titan, what can strike hard and fight well? Pad weapon, flintlock. Chariot pad weapon. So I would have, I think here a slight modification that I would have maybe done if I were him were to put a great weapon on the Kadim Chariot. Because then you can possibly uh, have some good counter charge piece that can strike well. I think this would have been needed in this list. And also he has no chaff. That's that's a big issue, I guess. That's a big issue. Because he has no Vassal Crave, no Relentless. So nothing can chaff. So he might struggle to move forward on the table. So I think this is going to be um, slightly passive list that has to wait, shoot, shoot, shoot. Cannot really face monsters well because of the tool that he brought from range damage and close combat. So I think mostly he will be targeting to face stuff like um, where there are a lot of maybe vermin swarm. He can face them. Not sure though that he can reduce enough to then beat them in combat. That's a big question mark. Yeah, not so convinced by this list to be honest. Uh, guys, if, if you listen to this video and there is your list, don't be offended. That's just my personal view on the list. I have my taste, but that doesn't mean that your list is weak <laughs> at all. <laughs> That's just my taste. I try to be honest and uh, be a bit critical because I think it's less interesting if I tell to the people that listen to the video, yeah, everything is great and interesting. <laughs> so we have again, Tarbak, uh, he's playing for the second tier C team. Yeah. Uh, so we have Novel Lord, Kingslayer, Eros Art. Here you see there is a better combination of the weapon. Before we saw um, with the shooty weapon and Eros Art, I like better this one. Because basically, if you're facing strong character, you have five attack strength, seven at least. And if you face a big unit, you have a lot of attack strength 5. 
so that's nice. Blaze Mask Luga Dice. Yeah, uh, not bad as an Overlord build. Not something that I would have picked, but definitely interesting. Adept Alchemy plus Lamas Scholar. Is it enough for magic with a lot of battle? Could be. A bit short maybe damage wise, but definitely buff to buff combat. I think this is enough. Um, prefer Binding Scroll than Crystal Ball personally for 10 points more, but it's a question of taste. Then you have a 1-up BSB that doesn't want to fight too much. Just want, yeah, I think he just wanted to be able to put him in the same unit than the Overlord, but not be killed by normal wreck and fight attacks. Uh, two blocks of Ziggurat, Ziggurat regular. Nice to see them again. We didn't see them much last year, so this is nice. Slaves, um, two times twenty immortal great weapon, two Kadim giant, two citizen giants. So as you can see, everything is in double here. Uh, two times, two times, two times, two times. Yeah, well balanced list because you have them to operate in the flank. You have Overlord that can play with Immortal, but they can also be on their own because for 440 with great weapon, they are decent damage output. And if you need to hold some charges to have bodyguard, you can put your Overlord within, which is nice. He has some chips. Slave that he can just throw in the middle of the pack, on the, of the middle of the board, sorry, to just create some openings and also be provide counter charge if needed. So it's slightly short damage wise, but it's nice. Maybe the, the choice that I would have questioned is exchange that maybe for occultism because Lama Suscola has already access to hereditary and plus to armor save um, that are. Not, yeah, already interesting spell, but not must have. Or obviously, plus two armor save is nice on most of the unit. But I think with occultist, you would have an access to another nice tool, which is the plus two ward save, to have some access to to another buff that is nice, and maybe also try to uh, fit in heirloom would have been nice to have this six spell that might be useful in some cases. But definitely a nice list. He has almost no flaming attack, only these two units. So it's not too sensitive to what save against fire, but still can trigger some reroll if needed. Uh, I would have expected maybe slightly, yeah, what I would have expected is a flaming banner on these two units. Maybe because it's core and he has an adept alchemy plus lama scholar. So I think here with a double flaming banner would have been really nice to get some rerolls on this strength 5 attack. But a uh, good list, I guess. Quite fighty. Not, he has no war machines, no shooting at all, actually. Um, yeah, interesting. Also, we might question the choice of slacked, slacked Slave in exchange maybe for one Vassal with bows to add some flammable token, but it's not really needed. It's it's just nice sometimes to have those incendiary token also to cast blast from alchemy to get reroll two wounds. So maybe we could have exchanged one for the price. It's like thirty points more, but I'm not sure. I think he really wants them to to throw them in the middle of the board and create some openings. So I think that that was the reason, the main reason why he picked them. So fighty list, nice to see to see that also. My friend Paul from ETC Switzerland, he plays. Master Pyro, a lot of Paul's love shooting. So <laughs> definitely, I'm not surprised that he picks a lot of shooting in his list. We have a fighty commissioner that's going to go in a unit of anointed that is going to play the role of um, basically to zone more stuff because, as you can see, that's the main unit that fight in his list. So he has an engine that can zone a little bit, but shooty engine. An anointed star and then a bastion unit and other than that that's some levies, one that can chaff. So definitely a defensive list with a lot of shootings that might I think it might struggle to play against uh, again MSU monster list that can move well, that can exploit the space. It might need to be very compact against them, but just make very hard to, to break him. I think it's hard to break him. Because if you, if you rush him, first of all, you need to survive to the shooting. It's double Titan Mortar, double Nefta. I think that Paul list might be really, really good against mass army like Vermin Swarm. If you see here, Master Pyro, then you have double Nafta, double Titan Mortar. Oof, all these bow shots. Bastion, so I think this, this list is just a nightmare for things like Vermin Swarm, uh, New Dread Elves. Um, 
maybe things also like orc and goblins that bring more stuff to the table i think this is the list that you will like to to pair really well to be very effective shooting wise against uh, the good targets but then you don't want to face maybe you don't want to face stuff like uh typical msu war of the dark god army where you might really struggle to because i don't think that only two titan mortar and an anointed star are enough to stop this type of list also blunderbuss shot don't think it's enough to stop this type of list but i like especially the fact that paul brought a lamasu scholar with the book as a um, good complementary piece to the master pyro because with pyro you lack buff and he brought a piece that uh, that has access to a lot of of uh, buffs and also the fact that yeah lamasu don't forget it's one of the few because it's a special adapt it hasn't been nerfed by the magical change meaning it's maybe slightly stronger than before for the points which um, is good good news for him okay next john with uh he's playing master pyro popular choice for the id apparently um tablet of vedovziness i know this is an item that can make uh, pyro a bit more effective especially getting off some more the, the, the some of the spell that are maybe a bit harder to cast then he has a, a nezip cash apprentice alchemy on the bastion okay apprentice occultism on the luga chariot so i think this is definitely a cowboy that we will see a piece that we will see quite a lot since the last update because for less than 300 points you have access to toxic breaths you have a guy on the chariot that is expendable so this is definitely a good choice um yeah cheap bastion as well is not a bad choice rod of battle okay um just thinking if maybe i would have exchanged both because he might die to uh, might die a little bit but definitely it's not too expensive <coughs> it gives you access to the bastion for a bit less points than the bastion that you pay in special so maybe that was his reason for the choice then he went with uh, icon of Ashuruk and a one-up PSB, nothing to fight. So he has no fighty character expect, uh, except it from the, the small cowboy. Can be a bit annoying. And he has a legend standard, which is for me the best choice on the blunderbuss. Um, that are going to have the bastion within 20 citadel guards with spear and flaming. It's not too expensive for them. And I love the fact that they can shoot a little bit. They are decent at fighting. So this is definitely not a bad choice in core. 20 levies, 2 units of great weapon, Lugar. Yeah, as you can see, the disciples are getting very uh, famous and a, a, uh, a choice that uh, in the book that a lot of people pick at the moment, which is nice because they got a nice discount and are very cheap at the moment. And we didn't see much of them last year, so it's nice to see Lugar unit back on the table. Whether or not it's the right price, well, we will see later this year. 5 Vassal Cav. But this is maybe also a commentary on that. This is also something very nice from the Bellum Lacum. Is you, it's the first moment where you see the, the new IDs in the competitive list on, on team tournament because all of the people here want to do well at the tournament. So piece of chaff um, and then to rocket battery. Okay, so here as you can see, it's the, the variety that what might do in front of Dwarf. So here instead of picking war machines to have like redundancy with pyro to be really good against um, low resilience target like vermin swarm it decided instead to complete a little bit the approach to be it's more like a all-round type of list he can play against stuff like the elves he can play like against stuff like monsters because he has access to great weapon here and to double rocket battery so this is definitely a type of list that I expect to be able to play against most of the stuff. What might cause him trouble? I don't know. It's hard to say on paper. I think it's very yeah, all-around type of ID list. A little bit like a Swiss knife. Uh, Simone Cucuza. He plays Prophet on a bull. Master Pyro. It's a small bull. Infinite weapons, nobody wants to play the big bull anymore. <laughs> it's getting too expensive. <laughs> Still love the model, by the way. So we have a Master Pyro on the bull. Okay, he has a 2 up, 5 up, 2 up against fire, magical heirloom. Do you struggle maybe to get the line of sight of Pyro with a guy that has only 
four woods resilience five maybe maybe that's a question love this bsb build this is something that we might see um, in a lot of id lists something definitely that i'm i would consider in an id list at the moment love as well this guy he can be a cheap late game chaff witchcraft is very useful love him uh, as a very good complementary piece for the master pyro so very strong magical setup I really love his. Um, I think it's a it's a bold choice to bring a Prophet on the Bull of Shamut, but uh, if he has something to hide it, and he has, he has a, a Titan and a Bastion, might be a, might be definitely playable, and he can cast his spell from behind because he has some good range on Pyro. So love the idea, love the idea. This is bold, but I I love the idea, I love the, the character setup. Then we have twenty four Blunder with Ban of Speed. Instead of the legend that we saw before, 30 vassals. Yeah, I don't know if they are effective. It's either maybe you want to bring 40 to be able to last a bit more, 30 just like in between. You're not sure they are able to hold against good charges. Um, not so sure this if this unit spear and shield works anymore. But um, it's definitely not so expensive for 30 guys that can reroll to wound with flaming. And also, what is he? is Shamut, so he has only hereditary and bow shots to give him real to wound. Okay, still might be enough. Chip scoring, two anointed. So again, here we have five scoring units, which is for me um, a good amount. Four anointed per weapon, three anointed per weapon. I still love the anointed. You know my taste for them. The Bastion Academy Chariot as a support piece. Five. A vassal cav and a Kadim titan a fighty titan um so he brought brought all that's typically the type of fist that i could have played <laughs> in id because he didn't play much sh shooting only shooting from core which is also something that i do usually and then he brought some combat piece um which so definitely uh like this list i could have definitely played something similar than that so good choice uh do we have something else we have maybe a last one our friends from Belgium, Gregus, he played a Nezip Cash Adept on Alchemy with a Flintlock Axe, a Lamasus Cola with Binding Scroll. So this is not much, and an Adept of Witchcraft, okay, Triple Adept, good magical setup. Um, yeah, yeah, good mix, I guess, from Spell. Not many, many damage, but still depending, yeah, you can still pick two damage here, an additional damage here, and some other buff spells, so... You still have access to a lot of stuff and magical alum as well so yeah definitely a good magical setup but still as you can see you pay the price i mean it's like six it's a bit less than thousand points so still quite expensive for three mage that do nothing else than magic um we have a bsb with blaze heroes art potion strengthness uh, original build so five attacks tank five ap3 with an initiative buff and a one up that cause hits if you doesn't get hurt uh, doesn't get hit in combat you get some additional hits that you generate against the opponent personally in fighty vizier i like to see the mask because the immunity the fearless aspect the immunity to i, th I think it's not is it fearless or immunity to fear i don't know but the, the fact that you are not impacted by fear i think it's huge for infantry units that are going to pass some steadfast and fear check so definitely i love to see the mask and it's also quite cheap you get real to hit so it's nice in combat so i think i would have liked to see instead of that find a little bit more points to have a mask i think it would have been worth it 26 citadel guards so this is the shooty unit where he's going to put his at least his general two times 20 levies cheap to we have some additional shots, 23 slaves, 7 enforcers with infernal weapon and icon of Ashrock. Quite, quite expensive for what they do, definitely I prefer the anointed, but I haven't tested them a lot, I must say. Um, then we have 4 incarnates with a champion, so not much combat as you can see from here. This is a bit, uh, we might see, I has at least a Kadim Titan, Fighty Titan. One NAFTA, a rocket battery, and another NAFTA. Okay. Uh, yeah, what can I say? 
I think combat wise it's a bit weak at least to my taste because this can die easily from shooting and then he has only the titan to really put pressure uh, because the rest yeah even the enforcers it's mostly also to remove the flaming attack from the kadim family if you need to ah this is an engine sorry i missed that this is an engine so adds a little bit solidity this is a bit all around list i must say because he has some shooting so he's happy to play from distance I think he might mostly use the Kadim to zone and also enforce us to zone a bit the opponents and then shoot 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 and alchemy plus rocket battery can hurt big targets especially since he has access to Nezip Cash he's an engineer so this rocket battery is not bad at shooting at the opponents for on only 155 so I think this is a, a good combination that he found and then with double dafta he can reduce the big unit so this is a good all around list I guess maybe a bit short of co pure combat power I'm not sure for example that he might not get rushed at by opponent and be in trouble I think he will like often to start his game and do some damage and also maybe minimize a little bit what um, yeah reduce the impact of the opponent by deploying like in a corner opposite side and stuff like that and delay a little bit the combat and shoot before it starts i think he needs that in order to to be effective so that's it we made all the list what can i say general comment Ogre can we saw a good variety between yeah me and benji we had some knowledge from last year we changed a bit the list but i think since it worked well for us at TCC last year we didn't change a lot a lot a lot so Benji didn't change at all I guess and I try some new stuff but still similar concept TT took inspiration from from Benji and I and made his own list with a bit more shooting um, and then we have a couple of more if offensive lists we saw some double rock we saw two or three two I guess wild artist so we saw definitely a couple of variety in the, in the list we have I would say one ogre can that is more um, between mix arm and shooty and uh, other type of ogre can that it tries to be very aggressive but it's more like it's very risky approach that can also backfire in my opinion especially if you talk about the rock or rock list um, so that's that's a bit my opinion about ogre can but interesting to see this variety we see some taskers we didn't i would have expected something of a surprise i would have expected more bombardiers we didn't see a lot of bombardiers uh, despite the the price decrease so i would have definitely expected more bombardiers in the list that's something surprised me a bit and we saw law wise we saw people keeping the shamanism i went back to tom you will see why i explained in the, in the list review if in my tournament conclusion and then we have still people sticking with tom uh, alberto tried to play pyro in his list and then the rest is mixed between shamanism and tomaturgy that we saw slightly more regarding infernal dwarfs we saw a little bit of everything <laughs> so we have between more fighty list the list of tabak with double giant double uh, 20 immortal double ziggurat regular which is the most combat oriented army that we saw also the the last list the list of uh, uh, not this one the list of i think it was simone yeah that played that list that i like a lot it's also a fighty type of id so we saw two fighty id and the rest of them like six or seven i would i would guess i played more shooty version mix arm to shooty um, that was a bit the approach for the id we saw that with the range damage that they have at their disposal in the book they can pick either uh, focus on a particular weakness that they want to target for example against mass like we saw in some of the lists with Master Pyro, uh, Double Naftator uh, and Titan Mortar that really want to destroy the, 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 big, the big unit. And then we have other type of list where it was rather the focus on having a balanced range damage that can hurt monsters but can also hurt monster and character I might say. And that can also hurt some more blocky, uh, more blocky units. So that's a bit the difference. I think also this distinction between these three type of ID might be if you're able to play against everybody which is the, the case for all round type of list where they are maybe easier to pair within the the, the pairing process it's easier to, to put them because they have a lot of yellows maybe 
and then I expect a more fighty list or shooty list to have more distinguish uh, their um, estimation rating of the matchup um, to be between a, a good and a bad matchup. So that's a bit my opinion on, on these two type of lists. Guys, thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope you, you like the review. It also yeah, show you a little bit what are the new ideas at the starting of the year. So I hope you like that. And don't hesitate if you have any question. I will try. I don't know what type of result I will get at the end of the tournament, but I will try to maybe uh, show you at least which of these two army book, uh, which, which type of list perform the best, maybe. That might be interesting for you as well. So thanks also for watching and talk to soon on my channel. Bye-bye.